Well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. You are very welcome here uh, in our building, and we expect from you cooperation to find some final conclusions at the end of the meeting, which we can, uh, with big confidence, forward to the Curia here in the Vatican. Uh, this is important. That's usually the way how uh, we work. The Pontifical Academy of Sciences, as uh, Marcelo Sanchez Sorondo already mentioned, is over 400 years old and had been restored uh, some 80 years ago uh, in, in the work since that time in the present situation. We have a membership of a total of 80 members at lifetime. That means that, unfortunately, we never will have a, a plenary session where all the people could attend. Uh, the older ones may not any longer be uh, able to travel. Since we, org we recruit our members worldwide, from all the continents we have members, and for, from all the disciplines in the natural sciences, which are quite a few. Uh, so uh, this is, if we have a plenary session every second year in the fall, we are glad if uh, half or a little bit more than half of our permanent mem members, academicians, uh, can attend and debate. Uh, now, certainly the 80, 80 members will not be competent to report on all advances in science. Actually, our task <coughs> is to closely follow advance of scientific knowledge and application of scientific knowledge through technology to make it uh, interesting and uh, helpful for our daily life, the technological applications. The question is, do we like to have all the technological uh, innovations or not. And one of the conditions which we expect that a majority of people living on that planet will be, uh, we should not blindly use uh, the nature as such, but uh, in some way try to make the condition that the Development, in, uh, uh, sustainable development will not only work for a few generations on this planet, but for long periods of time. And for this reason, we are also interested, of course, in the evolution of the universe. Uh, I have given some ideas on how science has its roots. Science has, one says usually, has its roots in the curiosity of the human beings. As compared, I work with bacteria. As far as I know, bacteria have no uh, curiosity and no intelligence, no nerve, nerve systems and so on. These are much simpler organisms. Uh, Now, uh, if you uh, come to these conclusions, you may uh, wonder where are the roots. For me, uh, the first written scientific publication is actually in the Bible, chapter of Genesis. For me, that's a wonderful chapter. It shows that these people who lived on the flat land uh, with the sky, uh, they wondered, I cannot have been there before I could stand on the land. And then I had to have some food to eat something. So they reflected and came to conclude uh, the uh, creation of what they benefit from th uh, at that time, uh, thousands of, of years ago, 
uh, they were actually created stepwise. In the first period, they, in the Bible, it said the first day. For me, this is not 24 hours. That's a long period of time. The uh, land was created. They didn't know that we are on a round planet, but they f believed that it's flat land. And they knew there was water, and the water had to be separated from the land. And then, uh, finally, when uh, also the, the light came in from the sun, moon, and the stars helping at night time to find your way, uh, if you have the experience, then uh, that's the condition that life could start. It doesn't start with bacteria, single cellular organisms, because they had no loop, no microscope to see the bacteria. Uh, what should it be? Should it be the animals? No, because animals also have to eat. So let's start with plants, and then uh, they, and afterwards only uh, animals, and as a crown, human being, which according uh, to the Old Testament, uh, are shepherds for all this creation. This is an important point. And this is not natural science, but f philosophy, religious beliefs. And still nowadays, I think uh, it is important in this context here to remind that <clears throat> even today, science, no, scientific knowledge is not the only one coming from experimental investigations and reflections and then the reflection come uh, with the help of philosophy and religious beliefs. So uh, this is uh, quite nice. And uh, we uh, think that the input, for example, to uh, request uh, in our worldview that uh, sustainable development should allow all the living beings uh, to persist, and that's not easy. And I think, therefore, I'm very grateful to the organizers of this meeting uh, to reflect uh, for a few days on what are conditions that we could preserve the richness uh, which we still benefit from. Uh, my own field for the last uh, several decades was to find out the, uh, so I call that the laws of nature for natural evolution, uh, evolution both of the uh, cosmic evolution, that means the habitats, and uh, particularly I in, was interested to look into the laws of evolution of life. Uh, I think it, we have good, very good evidence that life started a uh, long time back uh, on, with, with single cellular organisms like bacteria. We have a big microbial world and we have more and more knowledge on how these uh, organisms live and evolve. And it, the evolution uh, has been shown to uh, function uh, co constantly. I, may, I, I must say evolution, in, as a matter of fact, is a very slow process as compared to the processes uh, of biochemistry where the researchers can isolate an enzyme, put the substrate with the enzyme in a test tube, uh, incubate it for a few hours, and then harvest the product and show that the product is there, he knows what it is. This is not uh, how ev uh, evolution proceeds. Evolution has to carry out very carefully, uh, occasionally, a spontaneous mutagenesis, and that will touch in microbial population one cell in several thousand, 
each time, per generation. That means uh, the majority is not touched uh, in due time by mutations and can persist. But if there is an improvement by a spontaneous mutation, of course, that can slowly overgrow, finally, the parental form, uh, adapting to these particular habitats which become available also occasionally by changing the habitat. So the uh, mechanism of spontaneous evolution, besides, of course, there are, uh, uh, there are mutagens, chemical and radiation mutagens, but this is rather a minority. Most of the mutations are internal, guided by, by the living being, and there are a number of, uh, I call these evolution genes, which are in no way important for my life from the start as an embryo to my death, but they are important that it came to me in the course of evolution. And these genes, we know them, at least some of them very good. These are uh, genes which have to be kept back where to work only very occasionally, but uh, in the right uh, uh, speed, so that occasionally, as I mentioned, one in a few thousand cells uh, obtains a new mutation. A minority of them is helpful, a majority either neutral or not at all. Besides that, uh, of course, there are also uh, other ways, natural uh, conditions, isomeric forms of nucleotides, for example, give rise to point mutations that is local, just one nucleotide replaced by another one. If there is not enough activity rapidly to uh, inhibit that mutation. So nature has genes propagating mutations and other genes inhibiting uh, uh, too frequent mutations. <coughs> it's a wonderful system and you can say that system works for, for millions and millions of years thanks to uh, the uh, evolu evolution genes. Uh, one of the mechanisms is the horizontal gene transfer, which we have studied very intensively in the bacterial world because of antibiotic resistance spreading from one bacter bacterial cell to another. And uh, horizontal gene transfer seems to be uh, an important factor for all living beings. Therefore, uh, I draw the, the, the tree of evolution, which Darwin published like a tree uh, in, outside in the park here, with uh, common root and branches, and the top of the branches are nowadays. And at various places, randomly placed within two branches, I make a connection and uh, symbolizing uh, the uh, horizontal gene transfer. And in conclusion, uh, the evolution genes uh, have, a, 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 there, there is a, a duality in our genome. These genes are in my genome, they are in your genome, in the bacterial genomes, which help evolution at a very slow rate to proceed. And uh, we have to be aware that besides a common root, we have a common uh, future uh, because our descendants for many centuries of years will still profit occasionally to have a horizontal gene transfer and therefore uh, it's important to realize that we have to be very careful with our environment and not to reduce rapidly within a few hundred years this big biodiversity which we appreciate. I think I should stop here uh, and give the word to uh, <laughs> the president of the other academy.